man who's running the tournament himself. I'm pretty Wait sure a second, something's wrong here. What's that? Is this losers? No, this is winners. Oh, that's right. Yugi won. I was mm -hmm. going to say there's no way Herbert Herbie's in losers this quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is like his first match of the day, uh, tournament-wise. Like, wow, they're off to a quick start. All right. Duck Hunt, Roy, Rushdowns, and Cans. Lots of projectiles. Cans, Clay Pigeons, Banditos. You name it, man. He's got it. Funny fact, uh, Bandito was the Japanese name for the Nintendo game Sheriff. Oh, really? Yeah, that was like back when like Melee came out. It was shown in the Assist Trophy, mm. the Sheriff. That's interesting. It's funny how those things work out. It really is. I'm unfortunately for better or for worse again a walking Nintendo encyclopedia for that kind of thing. I've watched and read trophy descriptions in Smash games for hours. Hey, those are some really interesting um, little tidbits they can include. It's actually kind of sad that you know. I understand. Placeholder and milky. I understand, you know, that they didn't milky want to take the man hours to put the trophies holder. in, but with the spirits, they could have at least gave us like some kind of like little trivia or something. It's a lot of fun, but that's saying I'm not sure if it's a lot of fun watching Hyper Kirby take that stock off of Yugi X so mercilessly yeah. with a side B or whatever. I didn't even catch it. I'm assuming side B because I've seen him do side B all the time, and my mind was another place for a moment. <laughs> anyway. But he's hey, already putting the pressure on Duck Hunt. Yeah, he's not letting him breathe, which is what you should do. That's exactly how you play Roy. That's why I really think Roy's a top-tier character. Yeah. And uh, should Hyper Kirby enter Momocon, I really see nothing but a high high placing for him. Oh, oh my god, my the up non-tech. Ooh, the stage spike. Weird. He is already still up three, st up, up two stocks, up two stocks. Ooh, okay, he blocks the Clay Pigeon. And it looks like he's got some familiarity with this um, matchup. The thing, the problem here is that um, Hyper Kirby's putting a lot of pressure on him, but mm -hmm. Yugi's not respecting his options. Oh. He is constantly trying to throw out hitboxes. He'll greet him for a good grab, mm -hmm. but he's basically just w trying to do what I call duck hunt things. I feel you. He wants to throw the projectiles just so they're out there. Yeah. He wants to make sure that they're out there to deter Roy, but he's not strategically placed them in a way that will actually get him to respect him. He's not throwing out his long range duck bill aerials to, you know, stuff his shorter range blades out. Yeah. So by throwing out hitboxes, you know, repeatedly, that's just more openings for Hyper Kirby. I agree. Yeah, because after he throws out the hitbox, you know, he's just there. Absolutely. You want to make sure you've got that neutral base first. Make sure that you're escaping. Make sure that... See, that was a beautiful dare read. That was amazing by Yugi X. That was really good. All right, now he's only down one stock. As long as he can get that adaptation, continue that read game, he'll, then he'll continue to do better, for sure. I agree. Can't say anything because uh, Hyper Kirby is number one in the states. That's true. Which in itself is a lot of pressure. Hyper Kirby, a rising star during the Smash Four era, um, made a low mid tier character that ended up being coming to top tier, and in doing so, became number one in our state. <laughs> it's crazy how those things work out. Well, George is stacked, and uh, he didn't just get there alone. He got there because George's competition is fierce. George is, yeah, a really deadly state, you know? Absolutely. I think that, you know, we put the right moves in action. We're going to put ourselves on the map. Mm -hmm. MBVA, Texas, yeah. y'all are on notice. Damn, Hyper Kirby don't even get the kill. He lets Yugi X take the kill for himself. All right. Winning with two stocks, taking game one. Let's see, going into game two, what Yugi X is going to do. Is he going to stay with Duck Hunt, or...? As far as matchups, I can't tell you. I play Roy and Friendlies a good bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of like my fourth character online. Never bring it in bracket because I already got my my, 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 my matchups triangulated. I, I triangulate, like, you know, start with Ike. If he's got bad matchups, pick two characters that beat his bad matchups mm -hmm. and cover each other. Okay. That's a smart way to go. I, I, I didn't catch the person's name who was here just before you, but he was telling me, he was, we were talking about, you know, how the fact that all these top players, they have, like, pretty much an arsenal of characters. Which is crazy in itself, considering how young this game is. The reason for that is a lot of what we learned in Smash 4, um, now even more so. Smash 4 is a good deal more balanced, or Ultimate's more balanced in 4. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sit there and solo main Cloud, Bayonetta, Sheik, Diddy, and so forth. That's You're true. going to have to find a counter pick. You're going. It's a much more counter pick heavy title. I agree. You want extra characters. You don't want to just use one because that's not going to take you far. Yeah, and speaking of that, looks like um, Yugi X did actually switch to Mark. He made the right choice in terms of character. 
Um, unfortunately, he's just space tanking side Bs once more. Yeah. He wants to keep that space. He wants to not throw out too many hitboxes and play more defensively. He wants to respect Roy's options, knowing that even though he's got a longer blade, Roy can get in super fast. Yeah. And Roy's going to stay in, too. Roy's very momentum-based, I've found. It's really based on UGX's play style, because match to match, I would say Marth wins this matchup. Mm -hmm. Marth has got the range, the speed, uh, the offstage, for sure. But... Oh my god, I would have said that would have been an amazing edge guard. Seriously. Ridiculous. It's like it just missed, though. But here's the thing is that uh, UGX's way of playing is that he wants to get in, you know, through hitboxes when he can. Get Hyper Kirby off of him is like his first thing, but when he's doing that, he's just giving Hyper Kirby more reason to go in and take stocks. This is just the bear. That's true. So, in doing so, he's, um, he's definitely playing like an offense. You know, he's playing, you know, come at me, let's see who hits who first, right? Mm -hmm. And that ends up, uh, you know, Hyper Kirby's calculated, even though he is... Oh, oh right. looks like I just got called. I'm sorry. I got to go stream. I might be back later. All right, Priest, man. All right. We'll see you when you're back. All right. Yeah. Um, based on the way he plays is he's not respecting the options, but when he gets an opening like that and gets the edge guard off the counter, that was beautiful. That was a great play by Yu-Gi-Oh! So once again, another great offstage play. And unfortunately, not before taking the F-Smash sweet spot from Hyper Kirby, losing game two. Hyper Kirby back to back two stocks. Looks like I'm joined Bomb Commentator you as well. Yeah.